Howdy Tubes, welcome back to the Zach Life. So as most of y'all know, I'm building a Super C you know, semi-truck motorhome. And because of that, I've been following a bunch of forums and groups on Facebook. And one recurring theme that I see often that I can help y'all fix right now is that people get on there all the time and they say, hey, I empty my crap tank, but it still shows full. Well, in my opinion, if you want to figure out how to fix a problem, if you want to if you want to eliminate an issue that you have, especially if it's a recurring issue, the first place you need to start is to understand in detail how what you're working on works. You you know, if someone gets on there and says, "Oh, you just need to flush it out." Well, that may fix your problem, but that doesn't necessarily keep your problem from reoccurring because you don't really understand what you did. You simply washed it out. Now I realize in this video is going to be pretty technical and I'm not trying to call anybody an idiot but if you don't completely understand all the terminology ohms and volts and amps and stuff like that uh, it's probably okay if you miss some parts and don't completely understand in theory every single thing that's going on inside of this little microprocessor. But follow along the best you can to get a good idea of what's going on, how this works and, uh, and the problem you're having. Why does it read full? So I got on eBay and for eight bucks I bought a used, obviously, a level meter system out of a, I'm guessing something built in November of 1992. So I've got it disassembled, took apart. It didn't come with any, it did not come with any kind of, of wiring diagram. So I had to sort of go through and pin out and figure out how this worked. But I've got it figured out, so let's let's sit down and start explaining and start messing with this thing. Okay, so I've got I've got this is actually a nine volt power supply. I'm using powers coming in here. This is the positive wire. This is a negative wire. Now it's reading like the battery's dead because it's nine volts. You know, if I had a twelve volt power supply, this would read charged. So this wire here, this this clip, you can see this is one wire, is hooked into the terminal that reads the fresh water tank and so it's reading empty now if, uh, if this would be a ground wire this is an extra ground wire and this is the only two wires we'll be using so if we short these together I guess actually it's hooked to a holding tank one if we short these together you can see that it shows a full tank level now let's quickly discuss a little bit of electrical theory here so there's a few terms I'm going to use, and that's voltage. You probably know what that is. That's, if you would, that's the pressure that's applied to the electrical system. The higher the pressure, the more power you can push through something, through an orifice. And the orifice is called ohms. Ohms is a, ohms is the resistance to electrical flow or amps. I hope that makes sense. Now let's talk about why I'm explaining this. So this level system works off of extremely high electrical resistance. It's a very, very sensitive ohmmeter, if you would. Uh, it measures, by my experimentation here, ohms in, in the range between about 200,000 and 320,000. So let's talk about the probes that are actually in your, your, in your, your water tanks. All they are, and I'll try to get a picture, all they are is a simple little rubber grommet that has got a bolt, if you would, that goes through the center of it. And so that bolt allows these wires to actually contact, physically contact, the liquid that's in your holding tank. So to give an idea of how actually sensitive this meter is, this is the wires that go to the sensors, and this is a ground wire. If I grab this ground wire in one hand and grab this wire in the other, I can actually make I can actually make this thing light up. Hold on, I got these stupid insulators on here, I can't grab it. Can you see that? We're going from empty to full by just the electrical current that's traveling through me. 
Now what this is doing is this is measuring an electrical resistance. This is actually measuring ohms. And, and by my calculations, and I don't have a book on this, but I've got an ohmmeter here and I was measuring the resistance of me, grabbing one in each hand, and then this little deal, we'll talk about this in a second. To turn on the green bulb, it takes roughly 320,000 ohms. To turn on the yellow bulb, it takes 260,000 ohms. And the red bulb is 200,000 ohms. So what does all this mean? Let's draw a picture. Okay, so let's pretend that this is your tank. In this tank, you'll have several different probes. We're going to just draw them just like that. Now, I'm not a very good artist, but who cares? This probe here will be hooked to the negative. These three wires here will be hooked to the sensor wire. We're going to call it S1 for sensor 1. Okay, so this may get confusing, but follow me if you can. If you need to stop and pause and back up and think about what I've said, please do and I apologize because I'm terrible at explaining things. So this is a resistor pack. It has actually got two resistors in it of a reading or a resistance of 60,000 ohms each. Now this will be wired just like this. One wire to the top, one to the middle, one to the bottom. Now let's throw this away and let's draw with my pen that I have somehow just lost up right there. Let's draw resistors. So we've got a wire coming off here, a wire coming off here, and one here. So in between these is a resistor. These are 60,000 ohms each. The electrical resistance of this water was going to be around 200,000. So we have a ground wire hooked here and the actual sensor wire is hooked right here and this will be sensor wire number one. Okay, so we have a water level right here that has covered up both of these probes. It's only touching these two and not these two. So the electrical resistance between these two now is around 200,000 ohms. And that's only through, that's only electricity conducted through the water itself. Now when you add electrical resistance in series, you simply add the numbers. So we have 200,000 ohms plus 60 is 260 plus 60 is 320. So we have an electrical resistance of 320,000 ohms between here and here when the level when the water level is at low. So for the low, and that's gonna look funny, low lamp, we need 200, or excuse me, 320,000 ohms. You fill it up to here, you have a 200,000 ohm resistance from this terminal to this terminal, plus 60 to turn on the medium, let's call it, medium lamp. You need 260,000 ohms, and the if you fill it all the way to the top, you'll have 200,000. If, if it's full all the way to here, you'll have 200,000 ohms bypassing both of these. Your 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 ohms, your in your current will travel from this probe through the water directly to this probe. So the full lamp, you need roughly 200,000 ohms. So this little deal right here is a voltage regulator. Uh, it's a 7805 which is a 5 volts fixed voltage voltage regulator. So you can determine that this electronic system, all these boards and these uh, 3309N chips and stuff all run off 5 volts. Okay, so let's do a little bit of math. So we'll take 5 volts 
divided by 320,000 ohms equals, let's write this number down, 0 0.000016 amps. So what does all this mean? After you sit here and listen to me ramble for 15 minutes, why does your level meters not, meters not work? So my point in saying all that is, is I wanted you to understand the extremely, extremely minute amount of electrical current that's required to cause this thing to read full. And as we figured out, it's 0 0.00016 amps. The point I wanted to make was, is that it takes a, a tiny, tiny amount of crap, literal, or P, or scum, or some kind of a membrane is growing inside your gray water tank, or, you know, salt crystals from urine that's in your black tank, whatever. That it takes an extremely minute amount of electrical current to trip this thing. Uh, as you know, salt is very conductive, and so if you get a you know, piece of toilet paper slapped up against the wall, that's going to cause you problems. Now, I'm afraid somebody's going to be mad and say, well, they already told us to flush the tanks. Well, the point I wanted to make was, is it isn't necessarily that your tank is full of crap, or that it's full of toilet paper, or that it's full of, you know, fill in the blank, whatever. It doesn't physically have to be full. It just has to have an ultra thin, ultra fine membrane of soap scum or uh, water toilet paper or who knows what laying up the side of that tank that has enough conductivity, con, con, I can't ever say that word, you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, uh, the ability to carry enough current, but it's just got to carry less than two ten thousandths of an amp to cause this thing to read full. So what I suggest, you know, it's like everybody says, don't don't dump your holding tanks till they're full, keep them clean. But I wanted to add a big caveat. And it's like they said, it's not that you just get, you know, you put a couple inches of water in your holding tank and you pull the valve open and it goes clean. You need to fill it up full, you need a one, you need to spray it, it needs to be hosed down. And uh, if you still can't make it work, you know, probably they're pop your little sensors out. Uh, typically, they're removable from the outside. They're just a jam nut with a piece of rubber that sort of swells up when you, when you tighten them down. Uh, pull them out, you pull them from the outside, wipe them off, blow them off, stick them back in there. Anyway, appreciate you watching this. Hope it makes sense, hope it helped you. You know, subscribe, thumbs up, hit the bell, whatever. Uh, before I leave, I'm going to show you one more thing. This is extra content. Some of y'all might be interested in this. This is the um, level system, the level monitoring system that's going to go in my toter home. Get back up here and you can see this. This is what's going in my coach. This is specifically the uh, level meter for the gray water tank. And so what this is, it's got a bolt pattern on top. You drill a hole in your water tank. Uh, mine's, mine's a very deep square tank and that's why this is so long. But this actually floats in it. This is a mechanical float. Uh, it's, it's got a magnet in it and it trips small magnetic switches uh, up and down this thing. It's got a something like a switch ever about three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to take this this meter. This is actually a fuel meter and somehow or another I bought this new and got paint over spray on it. Hopefully they'll come off. Uh, this is actually a fuel meter, but you can buy this same meter and, and uh, one that's got a picture of a water, you know, water on it instead of fuel. But this would give you, if you could, you know, this would be a simple hookup and relatively inexpensive. I think that this was about 40 bucks and this was about 50 bucks. So you're looking at less than $100. And you know, you could easily plumb um, three of these. You could plumb, you could wire three of these into one of these with a you know, double pole, double throw switch, or a set of them anyway. But this gives you a full linear sweep. You know, it just doesn't tell you that it's halfway full or running over. It'll actually tell you the level of it. Uh, I'll put some links or something down, but y'all might be interested in that. 
But anyway, I hope this made sense to you. I hope this will help you understand what the problem is so that it's easier to fix.